Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to start building applications. We're going to start learning how to communicate containers using all the knowledge that we have gathered. And I really feel that you are comfortable working with Docker Compose since you have been working with me with all of this through the entire course. So working with Docker Compose shouldn't be a big deal. I just created here some folders. I will leave you these files. So here we have a Drupal folder and inside of this folder we have this Docker Compose file that I just created for you. So we're going to start exploring it. But the first thing is that we're going to go to Google. We're just going to say google.com and we're going to try to look for what's Drupal if you didn't know. So Docker Drupal and then you see that Drupal is an open source content management. It's basically like a WordPress site. It's kind of similar, a little bit like a little bit more powerful, but it actually is an open source content management platform powered millions of websites and applications. So if at any time in your life you need to build a Drupal site, this is how you do it. So well, let's take a look at the Docker Compose file. So first we have the version, which is three, you already know it. Then we have the services. And we just assign the Drupal name to the service, but it could be anything. Then we'll start with the volumes. Something that I want you to say is that you could put image under volumes or volumes under images. But the thing is that everything should go under the Drupal service. The order doesn't really matter, but it should be under the service itself. Because if you do something like this, then you're going to have errors. Cool, so we'll start with a volume and we say that we're going to be mapping the Drupal volume that we create down here. So basically we just create a Drupal volume. This is like doing Docker volume create. Then we create a Drupal volume and then we map this volume to for www.html inside of the container. We do this because we want to persist the data even if the container dies. Uh, but now how do I know this path? Well, if you go to the Drupal documentation and you look for volumes, then you see that they give you the path where the data is being stored. And they are even giving you some examples right here. So, well, we are just mapping everything to this directory and all of the content will be saved in this Docker volume. We're using the Drupal 8 image in this case, so you can look for all the available tags and you can use the tag that you prefer. So we're using Drupal 8 dash Apache. We're exposing the port. I'm just going to change this to 8080. And we're also using the networks net. We're just creating a network here. This is like Docker network create a network with the name of net. And then we just join this container to the network net. And that's cool. This is everything for the Drupal service. Now let's go to the Postgres because Drupal needs a database to store some data. So we're going to be using Postgres. And here we're using this version of Postgres. So let's go to Postgres, Docker, Postgres. And you're going to find a lot of information here. So you see that we're using this image, the Postgres image, which is the official one with this tag. So you can use the tag that you need here. And this is the name of the image. Now we have here some environment variables. This is like MySQL. Then we're just defining a volume here to store the data. Again, you know how to do this because we already did it. We are just creating a new volume here. Remember that this means the current path. If I go to my shell and I type echo to this variable, you see that it actually returns my current path. It means that this volume will use the current path and the data folder in the current path. But in the current path, we don't have any data folder. No worries, because Docker will create this folder for you. And then we are mapping this folder to this specific location inside of the container. Because if we copy this and we paste this in the browser, then you see that all the data inside of the container is saved in this location. So that's why we're using this location. And we're also joining this container to the network net that we just created here. So this means that this Drupal container will be able to communicate to this Postgres container by using the name of the container or the name of the service. In this case, we didn't specify any container name. 
because that property is optional. And another thing that I want you to know is that you can use, for example, here volumes, you can use a Docker volume, a normal one, or you can use a bind volume. No worries, you can just mix them and nothing is going to happen. It is going to work. So now how do we test it? Now that we understand everything that we have here, it's time to run the surveys. So let's go to our terminal and here I will leave you a folder called apps and inside of apps we have these folders. So let's go to Drupal and remember that here we are talking about the data folder in the current directory but in this current directory we don't have any data folder so docker is going to create it in order to store all the postgres data and remember that the drupal data will be saved in a docker volume so if we type docker volume ls you see that we have a lot of anonymous volumes here and we have also a mysql volume but we don't care about this we just want to create the drupal volume and this folder to store the data so let's just go ahead and type docker compose app dash d remember that this should be done at the same level of your docker compose file otherwise it's gonna complain so as you see I didn't have the image locally so that's why it's been pulled from the docker hub but now we just need to wait until this finishes okay cool and here I have an error because I have one container running on port 80 and here in this file in the remote machine I haven't modified the port so I'm just gonna modify the port to use 8080 instead of 80 so this is gonna be like this and then I will try to do the docker compose app dash d again and now it doesn't complain anymore so cool now if you try docker ps you see your drupal container up and running and your postgres container up and running so let's go to our web browser let's hit our IP address on port 8080 because this is the port that we exposed and here you see that we have the Drupal setup installation so let's try to do it let's click on save and continue to choose a language now we're just gonna try to look for a standard installation I think and here we need to specify some things so in this case remember that we set up a Postgres SQL container the database name is Postgres it's the default name for the database the database username is Postgres and the database password is the password that you provided in your file in this case the password is example so let's copy that let's go here and paste it now we go to advanced options and here we need to specify the host where the database is running in this case this database service is running in this container but remember that Drupal can see this service by using the name of the service so we can say that the host that we want to use as our database is the Postgres because remember that Postgres is the name of the service the port is the same and everything else is the same so now we just can click on save and continue and let's see what happens and as you see it's super cool it's actually installed in Drupal let's wait for this to finish and cool now we need to provide some info so say test site and here we can say admin at admin.com just some username some password I will say test one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight and let's see what else we have and cool we can just click on save and continue and cool here you see that you have your dashboard it means that your installation was correct as you see it says congratulations you installed Drupal and you see how easy it was to set up a new Drupal server so now remember that everything is saved in volume so if we go to our terminal you see the data folder and inside of the data folder well you see all the files from Postgres which is cool and if you type docker volume ls then you see that you have here your Drupal volume and inside of this volume you should have all of the files all of the web server files so now let's try to kill 
these containers by using docker compose down. Remember that this should be run at the same level of the docker compose file and cool. Now you see that the containers are not running. If you go to your web browser and you refresh, then you see that your site is no longer working because you just removed the containers. But the cool thing about Docker and about Docker Compose itself is that you can just type docker compose app dash d in order to recreate all of your containers. Because remember that the data for Drupal is here and the volume for Postgres is also here. So if you just recreate all of this, the data is present and what happens is that once the containers are up and running, you can go to your website, refresh, and everything is exactly as you left it before, which is super nice. And this is one of the coolest things about Docker. So this is it for this video. I hope that you now have a clearer understanding on how Docker Compose works. I'll see you in the next lesson.